If you want to learn something about God, shut your mouth and listen to me for a minute. Many, many children healed. We've seen midgets grow. We've seen arms and legs that stop growing because the growth cells that stop. I don't make this stuff up. Behold the atheist's nightmare. That's the power of the Holy Ghost. Why do they teach every other theory in science except creation? Warlocks are enemies of God. And no one's ever going to convince me that uh, that the word of God is, is not true. You know if you put Jesus Christ first that he'll look after all your bills. And so the devil said, okay, it's a deal. And if you want to tell me how to live my life, it better line up with the word of God or shut your mouth. I'm loaded. I'm pregnant with miracles. What do you believe? Send us the cash. Welcome to Season 4 of the Bible Dumb Podcast. I'm your host, Davey Hell. And I'm Jesse Hell. And this is the podcast where two atheists read the Bible from Genesis to Revelation. And uh, like I said, we're on Season 4, the fourth book of Moses called Numbers. What do you think about that? <laughs> I was a little shocked when you said we're still in Moses. <laughs> yeah, we're still in Moses. So Numbers. Moses Moses is writing all of this. Yeah. Okay. Sounds exciting, huh? Mm. Any idea what numbers mm. means? It sounds really boring, but we read the tit- the headers the other day. Yeah. And yeah. Actually kind of sounded like there's some story. Hope so. <laughs> it's just gonna be God going, one, <laughs> one commandment, <laughs> two. I think Moses Two is just not, not a cool guy, so he's not writing cool chapters. You think Moses is a cool guy? Nah. He's kind of lame? Yeah. He just makes stuff up. <laughs> you think he made God up? Mm, maybe. Maybe. Maybe so. Yeah. I don't also, know. Also, his brother could get a bunch of free food. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well. Let's see how numbers goes. Chapter one. And the Lord spake unto Moses in the wilderness of Sinai, in the tabernacle of the congregation, on the first day of the second month, in the second year, after they were come out of the land of Egypt, saying, Take ye the sum of all the congregation of the children of Israel, after their families, by the house of their fathers, with the number of their names, every male by their poles, from twenty years old and upward, all that are able to go forth to war in Israel, thou and Aaron shall number them by their armies. And with you there shall be a man of every tribe, every one head of the house of his fathers. And these are the names of the men that shall stand with you of the tribe of Reuben, Elazar, the son of Shediur. The son of who? Shediur? Uh, Shed a ur? I don't know. Shediur? <laughs> so it sounds like. <laughs> All I right. don't know. Okay, so, so God, he says, make some armies. Yeah. Basically, count them up. All the fighting men. Yeah. Number Give them off them... because we're going to war. Yeah. Why are they numbering them off? Um, I guess they're just finding the fighting men. It says, take the sum of the children of Israel after their families, number their names, every male by their poles. Yeah, so they're just trying to find like the men that are 20 years and okay. upward and are able to go to war. So they're basically like Rome taking a census. This is intense. Yeah. Well, looks like we're getting some names real quick. Let's see which of the tribe of Reuben is going to war, besides Shittier. Of Simeon, Shalumiel, the son of Zeri Shaddai. Of Judah, Nashon, the son of Aminadab. Of Issachar, Nethanaliel, the son of Zuar. Of Zebulun, Eliab, the son of Helan. Of the children of Joseph, of Ephraim, Elishama, the son of Amihud, of Na Manasseh, 
Gamaliel, the son of Pedazur, of Benjamin, Abaddon, the son of Gideoni, of Dan, Ahiazur, the son of Amimishadai, <laughs> of Asher, Pagiel, the son of Okran, of God, Elisaphah, the son of Duel, of Naphtali, Ahira, the son of Enon. These were the renowned of the congregation, princes of the tribes of their fathers, heads of thousands in Israel. All right, so okay. we got our generals going into battle. And Moses and Aaron took these men, which are expressed by their names, and they assembled all the congregation together on the first day of the second month, and they declared their pedigrees after their families by the house of their fathers, according to the number of the names from twenty years old and upward by their poles. As the Lord commanded Moses, so he numbered them in the wilderness of Sinai, and the children of Reuben, Israel's eldest son, by their generations, after their families, by the house of their fathers, according to the number of the names, by their poles, every male from twenty years old and upward, all that were able to go forth to war, those that were numbered of them, even of the tribe of Reuben, were forty and six thousand and five hundred. Of the children of Simeon, by their generations, after their families, by the house of their fathers, those that were numbered of them, according to the number of the names by their poles, every male from twenty years old and upward, all that were able to go forth to war. Those that were numbered of them, even of the tribe of Simeon, were fifty and nine thousand and three hundred. Of the children of Gad, by their generations, after their families, by the house of their fathers, according to the number of their names, from twenty years old and upward, all that were able to go forth to war, those that were numbered of them, even of the tribe of Gad, were forty and five thousand six hundred and fifty. There's a shit ton of them. Yeah. And this seems just kind of sudden. Like, what are they going to war for? I'm guessing they're going to go kill some Hittites and some Perizzites and <laughs> Bibelites. They're going to kill all those ites people. Yeah. Canaanites. Canaanites, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I don't like it. No, I don't like it either. But, I mean, there's like 50, 59,000 with Simeon, 45,000 with Gad. Like, there's a ton of them. Yeah, for sure. I guess in my mind, it, it was just like, uh, I don't know, maybe a few thousand mm -hmm. escaping from Egypt, but there's like hundreds well, of thousands. Well, they've been building all the tabernacles, so they've had plenty oh. of time to <laughs> procreate. I know it seems like it's been a long time because it's, we've been reading this yeah. boring ass Well, Leviticus, okay, okay, okay. But you... Yeah, because they're really living to like... Well, no, they're living at like 900, remember? I don't think 700? they're doing that anymore. I think that was just Genesis. I think we got like mm -hmm. regular people now. Either way, I didn't think there was like hundreds of thousands of these people. Yeah, I wouldn't have thought that. Of the children of Judah by their generations, after their families, by the house of their fathers, according to the number of the names, from 20 years old and upward, all that were able to go forth to war, those that were numbered of them, even of the tribe of Judah, were three score and fourteen thousand and six hundred of the children of Issachar by their generations after their families by the every house of their fathers say, every fucking time. Every time you say Issachar, I oh. think Charizard. <laughs> yeah, I thought you were going to say something about how he has to repeat the same phrase every single time oh, for yeah. every single person. Oh yeah, well, I'm used to that. Yeah, yeah, twenty years and up, they're all going to go to war. Those that were numbered of them of Issachar were fifty and four thousand and four hundred. Of the children of Zebulun by their generations, after their families, by the house of their fathers, according to the number of the names, from twenty years and up, all that were able to go to war, those were numbered of them, even of the tribe of Zebulun, were fifty and seven thousand and four hundred. Okay, but they're twenty years and up. So you have to right. be twenty to join the army. Yeah. That's interesting. That's older than us. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Children of Joseph, namely of the children of Ephraim by their generations, blah, blah, blah. 
they were 40,500. Everybody remembers the phrase, right? I don't need to read it. Yeah, I don't think you need to read that. We it's got 20 it. and up. It's of their names, of their numbers, of their generations. Of the children of Manasseh by their generations, blah, 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 were 30 and 2,200. Of Benjamin, he had 30 and 5,400. Dan, he had three score and 2,700. And yes, all of these say of their families, of their house, of their fathers, and everything else. Just in case you're wondering. I know it, uh, I'd hate to uh, upset any completists here. Who <laughs> <laughs> does hurt me a little bit, but it's fine. Of the children of Asher, by their generations, were 40 and 1,500. Of the children of Naphtali throughout their generations, 20 and up, were 50 and 3,400. And those that were numbered, which Moses and Aaron numbered, and the princes of Israel, being 12 men, each one was for the house of his fathers. So were all those that were numbered of the children of Israel by the house of their fathers from 20 years old and upward, all that were able to go forth to war in Israel. Even all they that were numbered were six hundred thousand and three thousand and five hundred and fifty. So six hundred thousand. That's a lot. That's insane. That's a big army. Yeah. Especially for the time period. Yeah. I've been reading a lot about ancient Rome and I don't I don't even know if their army was that big. Like I don't know. Maybe it was. Mm-hmm. But the Levites, after the tribe of their fathers, were not numbered among them. For the Lord had spoken unto Moses, saying, Only thou shalt not number the tribe of Levi, neither take the sum of them among the children of Israel. But thou shalt appoint the Levites over the tabernacle of testimony, (laughs) and over all the vessels thereof, and over all things that belong to it, they shall bear the tabernacle, and all the vessels thereof, And they shall minister unto it, and shall encamp round about the tabernacle. Okay, so Moses and Aaron, they don't have to go to war. How convenient. Draft dodgers. Heard that before. They just get to hang out at the tabernacle. That's some bullshit. Mm Mm-hmm. And when the tabernacle setteth forward, the Levites shall take it down. And when the tabernacle is to be pitched, the Levites shall set it up and the stranger that cometh nigh shall be put to death. And the children of Israel shall pitch their tents, every man by his own camp, and every man by his own standard throughout their hosts. But the Levites shall pitch round about the tabernacle of testimony, that there be no wrath upon the congregation of the children of Israel. And the Levites shall keep the charge of the tabernacle of testimony, and the children of Israel did according to all that the Lord commanded Moses, so did they. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go. I don't like Moses. I don't like him either. I don't like him. He's he's not a good person. Why do you say that? Okay, so he obviously is lying in so many spots. Like, there's some pretty obvious favoritism here. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Like, you don't need. Everybody else had like 50,000 people, like 40 to 50,000 of 20 years and up. You don't need that many people for the to build a tabernacle. <laughs> no. No, that's for sure. But yet all of the Levites get to sit out. Yeah. But even in like the past chapters that we read, like what was the last one we did? Leviticus or whatever? Yeah. What was before that? Exodus. Exodus? Even Even in some of that stuff. Okay, one, how was Moses telling the story before he was even alive? What do you mean Genesis? How was he telling yeah. Genesis? I yeah. don't know. It's bullshit. <laughs> who told him that? Did he know. come into contact with anybody who was in that story? I mean, I guess his dad. No, no, wait, no remember, he, he was the oh, baby yeah. that was sent how on the did he river. Know? I guess God told him up on the mountain. I don't I... know. That's a good question. I don't like Moses. No, I don't like him either. He doesn't seem honest. mm, Interesting. Yeah. I guess that's why it was Leviticus was all about the 
tabernacle and all the rules of the tabernacle because that's his whole tribe has to are the ones that are in charge of it. Yeah. Mm, yeah. Okay. Right. Chapter two. And the Lord spake unto Moses and unto Aaron, saying, Every man of the children of Israel shall pitch by his own standard with the ensign of their father's house. Far off about the tabernacle of the congregation they shall pitch. And on the east side, toward the rising of the sun, shall they of the standard of the camp of Judah pitch throughout their armies. And Nashon, the son of Aminadab, shall be captain of the children of Judah. And his host, and those that were numbered of them, were threescore and fourteen thousand and six hundred. And those that do pitch next to him shall be the tribe of Issachar and Nephaeliel, the son of Zuar, shall be captain of the children of Issachar. And his host, and those that were numbered thereof, were fifty and four thousand and four hundred. Then the tribe of Zebulun, and Eliab the son of Helon, shall be captain of the children of Zebulun. And his host, and those that were numbered thereof, were fifty and seven thousand and four hundred. All that were numbered in the camp of Judah were a hundred thousand and fourscore thousand, and six thousand and four hundred throughout their armies. These shall first set forth, and on the south side shall be the standard of the camp of Reuben, according to their armies, and the captain of the children of Reuben shall be Elazor, the son of Shediur. <laughs> That's your favorite. And his host and those that were numbered thereof were forty and six thousand and five hundred. And those which pitch by him shall be the tribe of Simeon, and the captain of the children of Simeon shall be Shalumiel, the son of Zerushadai. And his host, and those that were numbered of them, were fifty and nine thousand and three hundred. Then the tribe of Gad, and the captain of the sons of Gad, shall be Eliasoph, the son of Ruel. And his host, and those that were numbered of them, were forty and five thousand and six hundred and fifty. All that were numbered in the camp of Reuben were a hundred thousand and fifty and one thousand and four hundred and fifty throughout their armies, and they shall set forth in the second rank. I feel like I should have been prepared for all the numbers, but I wasn't. <laughs> well, I didn't know that it was going to be so important, like where they're supposed to camp. All right, so they invented, like, the, the medieval way of fighting. Is that what they're saying? They're, like, all in their little parties, like, you know. I mean, they certainly didn't invent it, but yeah, they're they're basically laying out like where who's going to be <laughs> who drew the shit straw? Simeon? <laughs> who's going? No, Judah has to go first. Yeah, that sucks to be the first one in the battle. But yeah, they're basically camping out like by who he has to go in first. Who's the first wave? Who's the second wave? And I was thinking, doesn't Moses need to be there to like raise his arms up in the air? <laughs> Isn't that how they won their <laughs> first battle? That. Yeah. <laughs> then the tabernacle of the congregation shall set forward with the camp of the Levites in the midst of the camp. As they encamp, so shall they set forward, every man in his place by their standards. On the west side shall be the standard of the camp of Ephraim according to their armies, and the captain of the sons of Ephraim shall be Elishama, the son of Amihud. And his host and those that were numbered of them were forty thousand and five hundred. And by him shall be the tribe of Manasseh. And the son of the children of Manasseh shall be Gamaliel, the son of Pedazur. And his host and those that were numbered of them were thirty and two thousand and two hundred. Why don't they tell us what's on their banners? That'd be cool. When, you know how whenever do you remember the episode where somebody gave them like a almost like a crystal ball reading and then they're like Dan will be a serpent and oh yeah. Benjamin will be this or that yeah yeah I want to know what their like standards are as they're going into battle that's yeah, pretty cool that would be interesting like Game of Thrones style mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. I left that part out also like. I don't know who they're fighting and why. Yeah. That would that would help with the interest level for yeah. sure. Yeah. 
It's a context. Yeah. How invested do I need to be in this? <laughs> then the tribe of Benjamin and the captain of the sons of Benjamin shall be Abidan, the son of Gideoni, and his host and those that were numbered of them were thirty and five thousand and four hundred. All that were numbered of the camp of Ephraim were a hundred thousand and eight thousand and a hundred throughout their armies, and they shall go forward in the third rank. The standard of the camp of Dan shall be on the north side by their armies, and the captain of the children of Dan shall be Ahazer, the son of Amishadai. And his host and those that were numbered of them were threescore and two thousand two thousand seven hundred. And those that encamp by him shall be the tribe of Asher. And the captain of the children of Asher shall be Pajiel, the son of Okran. And his host and those that were numbered of them were forty and one thousand and five hundred. And the tribe of Naphtali and the captain of the children of Naphtali shall be Ahira, the son of Enan. And his host and those that were numbered of them were fifty and three thousand and four hundred. All they that were numbered in the camp of Dan were a hundred thousand and fifty and seven thousand and six hundred. They shall go hindmost with their standards. These are those which were numbered of the children of Israel by the house of their fathers. All those that were numbered of the camps throughout their hosts were six hundred thousand and three thousand and five hundred and fifty. But the Levites were not numbered among the children of Israel as the Lord commanded Moses. And the children of Israel did according to all that the Lord commanded Moses, so they pitched by their standards, and so they set forward, every one after their families, according to the house of their fathers. So, okay, that's the end of chapter two, so maybe we got through the, the rough part. Okay, maybe. But, <laughs> I mean, I keep saying that, but who, who the fuck knows? So, you know, we started this podcast, you know, one of the main reasons of doing it was to be able to recognize these famous stories and illusions when we're doing our own reading mm -hmm. and kind of exploring, you know, the canon of literature that, you know, references the Bible, right? which is like, you know, a ton of stuff. Sure. But I'm pretty sure... All the references are from Genesis <laughs> so and the beginning of Exodus. I don't think that many people are referencing Leviticus and Numbers so no. far. Uh -uh. I don't. None of this is sounding familiar. I mean, this sounds like a lot of war battles, but you know, I don't know. It doesn't sound like they're any different. Yeah, I mean, it sounds like. The exact kind of shit that's happening all over the world at this time period. Bunch yeah. of tribal warfare. Yeah. Everybody lining up and somebody's somebody's got the flank, somebody's got the you know, <laughs> rear. But I wonder even how organized they are. I mean, like, they sound pretty organized. Yeah, but like one of the like reasons Rome was able to conquer all of the known world is because they like understood how to march in formation and you know have an organized army and like a plan of attack and have a cavalry and all this stuff whereas like everybody else is just like tribes mm. of gauls just european tribes that are just like attack and they just start they're you know what the romans called barbarians because right. they had the same it's not like the romans had like guns yeah but yet they were still able to conquer like the entire world because they had like a, I don't know, just a higher education. They had like a leisure society where they were actually able to like study like, okay, if we put our spearmen in front and then our archers behind and stuff like that. Hmm. I don't think this is going on here. I don't know. Maybe. It's interesting though. I mean, it sounds like they're just lining up by family. Yeah. Which Do seems you think weird. There's got to be a hierarchy of family here, right? Oh, right? The Levites are like the special ones. For sure. Yeah. yeah. But I thought like, I don't know, they have Judah okay. going first, but it was I thought he would be like the one of the main dudes. Uh, I mean, isn't that why they're called Jewish people? Because they're descended from Judah? Really? Yeah. Judaism? 
Oh, that's interesting. I don't know. Yeah, I think there's like the whole kingdom of Judah, which was one of like one of their countries. Well, isn't that the different Judah? Well, it's the family. It's the tribe of Judah now. Is that the same one? Yeah, is it's the same the dude. Ju- that's the dude that okay, slept with his, mm, that's his the son's one, wife. Yeah, that's one that slept with, had all the sons sleep with the same woman and then slept with the <laughs> yeah, lady. Yeah, on accident was, though. Yeah. I don't okay. believe it all. Okay, but Judas. Judas is the one with that's, Jesus. He's different. Different. Yeah, that's a Jesus story. Okay. Sounds similar. I can see why you'd be. Oh, why can't, I've been confusing them the whole time. You gotta just forget about Jesus. I know, Jesus trying, is like trying, way, trying. way, way later. We'll get to Jesus. Okay. I'm actually looking forward to Jesus because, like, as far as I know, like from what I remember, like everything he said was pretty cool. Yeah, like, he was like a, a cool guy. dude. Yeah, yeah, I think so. We'll see. We'll My see. I thought whole... Moses was a cool dude before we met him. This is gonna be rough. Okay, I also feel like I just want to point out. They're listing all these people, and they're talking about all these people, and I really feel like, you know how, like, sometimes, like, you're hanging out with people, and, like, they start talking about other people, and you're like, I don't know these people. Like, I feel like I missed out on something. I know exactly what that feels like. (laughs) I feel like we missed out on something here. What do you mean? They're talking about all these people, and, like, we barely know any of these people, and I feel like we're having to pretend like we know, oh, yeah, Ruben, yeah. We know Ruben. Yeah, Ruben Dan? slept with Dan's mom or something. Remember? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know don't why. That's like the only thing I remember was... about Ruben. No, nah. maybe it was opposite. Nah. Maybe Dan slept with Ruben's mom. I don't know. Who knows? Somebody slept with somebody's mom. <laughs> but uh, yeah, like we know these people. They're the twelve tribes of Israel: Issachar, <sighs> Dan, Reuben, Judah, Benjamin. Yeah. They just really have not gone into them very much. They haven't done anything. Are they they're, dead? They're though? acting like we're best friends with them, and we're not. Are they dead? Those were Joseph's, but they've got to be dead, right? You would think so. Like Joseph's. But are they still living? Those are Joseph's brothers. Years old? No, I don't think. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Chapter three. <laughs> These also are the generations of Aaron and Moses in the day that the Lord spake with Moses in Mount Sinai. And these are the names of the sons of Aaron, Nadab the firstborn, and Abihu, Eleazar, and Ithamar. These are the names of the sons of Aaron, the priests which were anointed, whom he consecrated to minister in the priest's office. And Nadab and Abihu died before the Lord when they offered strange fire before the Lord in the wilderness of Sinai, and they had no children. Oh yeah, strange fire. That's when they got blowed up. Yeah, they did. And Eleazar and Ithamar ministered in the priest's office in the sight of Aaron their father. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Bring the tribe of Levi near, and present them before Aaron the priest, that they may minister unto him. And they shall keep his charge, and the charge of the whole congregation, before the tabernacle of the congregation, to do the service of the tabernacle. And they shall keep all the instruments of the tabernacle of the congregation, and the charge of the children of Israel, to do the service of the tabernacle. And thou shalt give the Levites unto Aaron, and to his sons. They are wholly given unto him out of the children of Israel. And thou shalt appoint Aaron and his sons, and they shall wait on their priests, and the stranger that cometh nigh shall be put to death. Okay, so, yeah, they're just saying everybody has to report to Aaron, all of the Levites, they're his people, to do with what he wants. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, And I, behold, I have taken the Levites from among the children of Israel instead of all the firstborn that openeth the matrix among the children of Israel. Therefore the Levites shall be mine, because all the firstborn are mine. For on the day that I smote all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, I hallowed unto me all the firstborn in Israel, both man and beast. Mine shall they be. I am the Lord. The Lord is a chatty Kathy. Calm down. 
I swear, I know we say this like every episode, but I thought the Lord only spoke to Moses like once from a burning I bush. Know. Like He's just when been, we, he won't shut up. When we started using the Scott voice, I did not think you were going to use it that much. I know. Like, <laughs> <laughs> it was supposed to liven up the podcast. Now it's just like this constant <laughs> droning of God just be like, hello. <laughs> <laughs> Moses, tell Aaron stuff for me. You got to keep reaching up in your seat to push the button. It's a, yeah. It's a little exhausting. No. I really uh, put my all out there for this podcast. <laughs> and the Lord spake unto Moses in the wilderness of Sinai, saying, Number the children of Levi after the house of their fathers by their families, every male from a month old and upward. Shalt thou number them? And Moses numbered them according to the word of the Lord as he was commanded. And these were the sons of Levi by their names, Gershon and Kohath and Merari. And these are the names of the sons of Gershon and their families, Libni and Shimei. And the sons of Kohath and their families, Amram and Izahar and Hebron and Uziel. And the sons of Merari by their families, Mali and Mushi. These are the families of the Levites, according to the house of their fathers. Oh, the Holy Ghost is falling asleep on his little doggy bed. <laughs> of Gershon was the family of Lebnites. In the family of Shemites, these are the families of the Gershonites. Those that were numbered of them, according to the number of all the males, from a month old and upward, even those that were numbered of them were seven thousand and five hundred. The families of the Gershonites shall pitch behind the tabernacle westward, and the chief of the house of the father of the Gershonites shall be Eliasaph, the son of Lael. And the charge of the sons of Gershon in the tabernacle of the congregation shall be the tabernacle, and the tent, and the covering thereof, and the hanging for the door of the tabernacle of the congregation, and the hangings of the court, and the curtain for the door of the court, which is by the tabernacle, and by the altar round about, and the cords of it, and all the service thereof. Yeah, so okay. while everybody you else is to... having to, like, fucking fight a war, they're like, you're in charge of the curtains. You know, a phrase that's in here a lot that really bugs me. Thereof. Thereof. I don't know why. It's you know, like thereof makes me cringe every time. I don't like it. it. Doesn't bother me. Blah blah thereof. Blah blah thereof. I don't like it. Yeah, I'm nothing I can do about it. <laughs> <laughs> so it's not a comment on you. It's a comment on the Bible. <laughs> There's a lot of shit in here I don't like. And of Kohath was the family of the Amorites, and the family of Izaharites, and the family of Hibronites, and the family of the Uzielites. These are the families of the Kohathites. In the number of all the males from a month old and upward were 8,600, keeping the charge of the sanctuary. Okay, I find it interesting that they're a month old. Like, they started a month old. Yeah, that's I weird. I kind of would have expected like everybody else is number twenty and up. Old. Yeah, where yeah. well, I kind of would have expected like a year old or up, because like in this time period, it's not like oh, you made it to a year, you're safe, you're not going to die. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's a good point. Like that's kind of what I was thinking at first, and I'm like, there's like being a month old isn't safe in this time period. No way, no. No, like you still, you got to make it to at least like five probably and be safe. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what the uh, mortality rates among children are at this time, but it can't be good. No. Mm. It's weird that they chose a month though. It is weird. The families of the sons of Kohath shall pitch on the side of the tabernacle southward. And the chief of the house of the father of the families of the Kohathites shall be Elizaphon, the son of Uziel, and their charge shall be the ark, and the table, and the candlestick, and the altars, and the vessels of the sanctuary wherewith they minister, and the hanging, and all the service thereof. And Eleazar, the son of Aaron, the priest, shall be chief over the chief of Levites, 
and have the oversight of them that keep the charge of the sanctuary. Of Merari was the family of Mahalites, and the family of the Mushites. These are the families of Merari. And those that were numbered of them, according to the number of all the males, from a month old and upward, were six thousand and two hundred. And the chief of the house of the father of the families of Merari was Zuriel, the son of Abihail. These shall pitch on the side of the tabernacle northward. And under the custody and charge of the sons of Merari shall be the boards of the tabernacle, and the bars thereof, and the pillars thereof, and the sockets thereof, and all the vessels thereof, and all that serveth thereto, and the pillars of the court round about, and their sockets, and their pins, and their cords. Roundabout, that's another one. Ooh, that's a good one, though. <laughs> I love a good roundabout. I mean, I love a roundabout, but the way they say it here, it's... Uh... I mean, the Bible's just so fucking stupid. This is just so dumb. Like, who the fuck cares about this? I don't know. Like, throw this one out. Why did the fucking Catholic <laughs> Church... Throw this one out? ...decide to keep numbers? I don't know. Ugh. I mean, I can... S- <sighs> it's gotta get better. It's gotta get better. Who are they fighting, number They're one? Like fucking, like, Zibiul's gotta fucking carry the curtains, and Neba Hill has to carry the candles. Like, we don't care. We don't even know these people. We don't care! <laughs> oh my I'm God. losing it. Um, I'm losing it. It's rough. It's hard. <sighs> but those that encamp before the tabernacle toward the east, even before the tabernacle of the congregation eastward, shall be Moses and Aaron and his sons, keeping the charge of the sanctuary For the charge of the children of Israel and the stranger that cometh nigh shall be put to death. Oh, get over yourself. Get (laughs) over yourself. (laughs) What? They're like, we are keeping charge of the tabernacle. We are protecting the tabernacle. Shut up. Nobody wants your fucking tabernacle. I mean, I guess it's made like gold and shit, so maybe people do, but. If they make it through. No one's making it through 600,000 people. Yeah. (sighs) All that were numbered of the Levites, which Moses and Aaron numbered at the commandment of the Lord throughout their families, all the males from a month old and upward, were 20 and 2,000. And the Lord said to Moses, Number all the firstborn of the males of the children of Israel from a month old and upward, and take the number of their names. And thou shalt take the Levites for me. I am the Lord. Instead of all the firstborn among the children of Israel. That I am the Lord was in like a parenthetical. It was like in parentheses. It's like, I'm the Lord. By the way, I'm the Lord. So insecure. The cattle of the Levites, instead of all the firstlings among the cattle of the children of Israel. And Moses numbered, as the Lord commanded him, all the firstborn among the children of Israel, and all the firstborn males by the number of names, from a month old and upward. We and already those did that this. Were we already them, said this. There were twenty and two thousand two hundred and three score and thirteen. Yeah, well, we, yeah, the Lord told him to do it, but now he's got to do it. Okay. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Take the Levites instead of all the firstborn among the children of Israel, and the cattle of the Levites instead of their cattle, and the Levites shall be mine. I am the Lord. And for those that are to be redeemed of the two hundred and threescore and thirteen of the firstborn of the children of Israel, which are more than the Levites, Thou shalt even take five shekels apiece by the pole, after the shekel of the sanctuary shalt thou take them. The shekel is twenty jerahs. And thou shalt give the money wherewith the odd number of them is to be redeemed unto Aaron and his sons. And Moses took the redemption money of them that were over and above them that were redeemed by the Levites. Of the firstborn of the children of Israel he took the money. A thousand three hundred and threescore and five shekels after the shekel of the sanctuary. And Moses gave the money of them that were redeemed unto Aaron and to his sons, 
according to the word of the Lord as the Lord commanded Moses. Wow! And he took their money. <laughs> this is where it starts getting shady. It's been shady this whole fucking time. And he's like, first he's a draft dodger. Then he just yeah, yeah, you're right. <laughs> takes all their money. It's just a bunch oh of bullshit. Gosh. This is just more proof that fucking Christians don't read this dumb book. They whine and complain and they bitch and moan up and down about how, oh, Holy Scripture, read your Bible. Nobody's reading fucking numbers. No, for and sure like, not. Oh, I mean, like, go through this holy God's word is what they call it. This is not fucking God's word. No, no. I cannot wait to get to different voices other than Moses. This is insane. Yeah. It's, it's I do insane. not. Okay. All right. Okay. I'm getting a little bit more understanding of how many people, why so many people are um, scammed. Like, if you can read this and not see that Moses is a huge scammer, it makes perfect sense why you can fall for scams. Yeah, like we were just talking the other day about how, you know how you you receive like scammer texts and emails, you know, and they're always misspelled. Mm -hmm. They don't make any sense. They're all like, all the letters are jumbled up mm -hmm. so that it's like an obvious scam. And I always thought, oh, this is an obvious scam. I'm going to delete it. How does anybody get fooled by this? And then recently I was kind of, I don't know if I read somewhere or saw an article or someone told me that they do that on purpose so that they know that if anybody replies to a misspelled bad grammar email, they're more likely to be gullible and less intelligent and easier to manipulate and take advantage of. That never occurred to me before. but Yeah, I've heard that before. Pretty sad, but... Yeah, you're right. Anybody who's reading this bullshit and like thinking like, oh, this, this is the holy word of God. Like, in the, grow up, bro. Yeah. Grow up, bro. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like it's pretty obvious what's going on here. It's uh, so obvious. Like Moses goes off by himself. Oh, I heard the word of God. Here's what he told me. Everything that I need in this time period, like like food, shelter, protection, God said, give it to me. Yeah. All the gold of everyone, the yearly tithing, bring me your food. We have these celebrations. Mm -hmm. Like everything. Okay. Yeah, for sure. Any other story and... In about five, ten chapters, you're getting the uh, result of this guy being a jerk. Yeah, and... the comeuppance. Yeah. 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 And, and everything think... coming around and unfolding and realizing that this guy was lying the whole time. Yeah. Any other book, that's the storyline. Yeah, I don't think he's going to get a comeuppance. Yeah, I don't think so. I also love how, like, just how, I don't know, Christians are just so willing to accept just random miracles in here but then they just they forget about the dumb shit like moses raising his hands in the air in order to win a <laughs> battle I'm like nobody talks about that i love how influential that was for you <laughs> it's just so dumb it's just so stupid it is dumb wait he didn't raise his own hands though well he, he did have... until they got tired and then he had to get some friends to come hold him above his head oh uh, just envisioning that good it's good like just the idea that grown adults are walking around thinking that water got turned into wine we're not there yet that, spoilers oh, i mean just it's so stupid jess it's so dumb yeah it just it's so frustrating to me it makes me so angry because i mean either, not all... either they're psychopaths Maybe. And they actually believe it, which you see the real people that actually believe it on the street corners screaming about how the fucking world's coming to an end. Yeah. Those people at least are honest. 
And then there's everybody else that's just like, mm, that's what mommy said. I don't care. It's yeah. just stupid. Where do you put the politicians bullshit. who use this bullshit to pass their laws? Just they're like Moses. They just use whatever they can oh. to take advantage of others. They're just oh, Davis, Davy. Wow, Davy. <laughs> <laughs> That's what they're doing. They're just like they're here's a centuries old cult wow. that we can use to just jump in and take advantage of all of these already cult followers. Okay, I'm going to be fair here. When I had the idea that you should read the Bible to me and we should record this because mm-hmm. it would be interesting. Yeah, your idea. Um, <laughs> it was my idea. I know. No, I'm saying um, it like it's your fault. <laughs> yeah. I did not think that I was going to think that this would become an evil thing, but it is becoming an evil thing. Moses is evil. He's an awful person. Yeah. I'm just, I'm, I'm blown away. I mean. This is a lot to deal with. Like, I, I didn't think that this was going to happen. Yeah. I don't know. But he's really bad. Seems that way. I am invested in seeing how he ends. Because he's got to die. Yeah, I don't know what happens with Moses. I don't know how he dies. Yeah. I guess we'll find out. <gasps> Next time. On season four of the Bible Dumb Podcast, <laughs> Numbers continues. <laughs> uh, Stay dumb, everybody. Stay dumb.